In this presentation, I want to stimulate a discussion of how best to use determinant frameworks, or indeed any implementation science frameworks, to understand the relationship between context and implementation. I'm going to do this by providing an example of what happened when we operationalized the context and implementation of complex interventions, or CC framework, in a study which aimed to identify the contextual determinants of tuberculosis care provision in South Africa. In 2014, the World Health Organization set targets to end TB by committing countries to achieve a 95% reduction in TB deaths and a 90% reduction in TB incidence by 2035. South Africa has experienced a high burden of TB for many years, and despite making important strides in reducing TB mortality and morbidity, the country's TB ep epidemic continues to impose a substantial burden on its health system and people. Multiple health system delivery failures have been associated with these problems, including understaffed facilities, poor communication of test results, and inadequate information technology. And although this study took place prior to COVID-19, there is arguably an even more pressing need for interventions to meet WHO targets. Aside from those targets, the role of people and the patient as active components of the health system have been neglected, seen with patient level factors negatively impacting on care seeking and adherence. And despite extensive documentation of TB programme failures, there's been little theoretical development of how contextual factors of the healthcare system interact with people's lives to produce poor service delivery and poor outcomes for patients. To address this, we investigated these relationships in order to generate hypothetical propositions of the contextual determinants of TB care, in order to inform the development of a health system strengthening intervention to improve TB care delivery through a more person-centered approach. The study was embedded within a broader five-year research program called ASSET with pre-implementation, intervention development and pilot and evaluation phases conducted across four countries, Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, South Africa and Zimbabwe. We conducted a theory generating case study to obtain an in-depth understanding of TB care in one district in South Africa. Importantly, the district was studied to be instrumental in exposing wider contextual forces that might shape TB care provision in other parts of South Africa. Now, the implications of using a theory generating case study is that you need to provide a means of generating theory. One approach could be to use a determinant framework to help structure the investigation. We decided to use the CC framework because it offered a way of thinking about context that extended other determinant frameworks and seemed to capture the range of contextual forces likely to impact on TB care. CC is a determinant and evaluation framework comprising three dimensions, context, implementation and setting, which interact with one another and with the intervention. For the pre-implementation phase, we focused on CC's seven contextual domains as a means for developing hypothetical propositions on the contextual determinants of problems in the delivery of TB care. The authors of the CC framework provide this figure, uh, which is a way of thinking about the relationship between different domains um, and the different shading of the semicircles illustrates micro, meso and macro contextual levels on which implementation, context and setting can occur. So conceptualizing context across domains and levels might provide an opportunity um, to understand the relationship between wider policy and what happens at the point of intervention delivery. Setting in which the study was conducted was selected due to a high TB case fatality rate of 11%. In 2019, over 400,000 people in the district were living in poverty, with 12% of the population living in informal dwellings. Between February and November 2019, we interviewed a range of stakeholders, including managers, nurses, doctors, community caregivers, 
as well as patients um, already on TB treatment and those who'd screened positive for TB. Within each clinic, we also carried out non-participant observations of non-clinical areas to understand uh, the process of care, such as patient flows, TB screening and testing, infection control measures. And we also review TB policies and routine data. For our analysis, we drew on Braun and Clark's thematic analysis as a contextualist method. So in other words, examining how macro contextual features shaped meso and micro or vice versa, thereby tracing a thread between specific perspectives or observations to the broader social historical context in which they were manifested. As the analysis developed, we mapped contextual features onto the seven contextual domains of CC. We analysed the mapped domains in light of emerging theories to generate hypothetical propositions which specified the contextual determinants of problems in delivering effective person-centred TB care. I'm now going to discuss some of our findings and the methodological lessons we obtain from this work. I'll do this by showing the analytical process for one extract that contributed to understanding delays in the diagnosis of TB. So here we have an extract that displays an interaction between multiple contextual features framed longitudinally. To retain the essence of this extract, we need to hold on to the sequence of events and how they are related and consequential but also how different contextual features interact within that timeline. So firstly, there is the social cultural context that informs what happens when a patient is admitted. For example, personal living arrangements, which might be relevant for tracing contacts, also issues that might be important to deal with while the person is in hospital. Then there is the ethical context of discharge timing, considering both the patient's psychosocial circumstances and an epidemiological perspective on likelihood of transmission to the wider community, also influenced by institutional constraints of obtaining test results, by a medical context of the patient's actual condition, and a bureaucratic and legal context that requires two negative tests before discharge. So that extract was one amongst many that contributed to the generation of a hypothesis about the determinants of delays in diagnosis in clinics and in the community, seen here in this figure, which represents how wider macro contextual features, such as the distribution of public and private health care or vertical disease programmes, function to shape the organisation and delivery of TB care in primary health care clinics and the screening and testing practice we observed at a micro level. In doing so, we are tracing a thread between a wider policy, discourse, infrastructure relations, and individual actions, whilst trying to retain the interactive nature of different contextual features. We then analysed uh, how we could transfer the themes that we'd identified in the transcripts of our interviews, of our observations, onto the CC framework, trying to map it onto different domains. So this involved assigning words, sit, sentences, extracts, field notes, and categorizing them within a particular domain. As we've seen with the extract just presented, this created a problem of knowing which domain to assign a piece of text to, whilst also retaining the complexity of the interaction between different contextual features. This table shows how we demarcated contextual features within the CC framework. In other words, here we can see the socioeconomic context and elsewhere it would be geographical, sociocultural, etc. We then identified which contextual features and domains contributed to different problems in the delivery of TB care as a basis for formulating hypothetical propositions. To do so, we had to consider how each domain interacted. As contextual features had now been demarcated into different domains, we had to avoid artificially retrofitting how different contextual domains interacted in a way that wasn't grounded in the evidence. 
To minimize this, we return to the data to triangulate our emerging hypotheses against the data. This analytical process therefore ran the risk of abstracting to a level of analysis which may have lost sight of the dynamic and nuanced relationships between different contextual features. So in conclusion, it's clear that the implementation science frameworks like CC were not designed to be prescriptive in how researchers carry out investigations. And the authors of CC are quite clear that use of the framework is not a substitute for detailed analysis. However, our own use of this framework raised questions about how researchers can make the best use of determinant frameworks such as CC and the dangers of imposing a structure on the object of inquiry. It's often said that frameworks are not theories. However, in using implementation science frameworks, researchers activate particular assumptions about context and implementation. In this case, that context can be conceptualized as comprising seven domains cutting across different contextual levels. The question is, how do our methods and analytical approach take account of these assumptions for understanding the consequences for knowledge production? There are potential pitfalls highlighted in this research in using implementation science frameworks to structure our investigations. Our analysis exposed ontological tensions between a view of context as interacting forces and CC structure of context as factors set within domains. It also revealed an analytical tension between induction and deduction, which we had to negotiate by working iteratively between the developing propositions and the data. Both of these tensions highlight key areas of concern in the production of knowledge in, in, within implementation research. The challenge is to understand and try and resolve these tensions in the process of producing findings and identify how to use implementation science frameworks so that they support rather than constrain our understanding of the problem under investigation. Thank you.